Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Well, I managed to find some time this week and have made a fair amount of progress on this little project. In part one, I had put together the bracket, and then off camera, I had applied a great many coats of everything to it. I'm pretty sure now it is as sealed as it's going to get. So, what I want to do in this video is first uh, mount this bracket in place, and then I want to put together the shell of the sump and get that in place as well. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there is a little device. It's a, something I put together on the other channel. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go have a look. It is a third hand. It's very useful for this kind of thing because, as you can see, it takes two hands to get the bracket where I want it to be, I put the backing on it, and uh, then clamp it in place. And it just acts as just a general platform initially, but then when you have everything where you want it, you slide up uh, the bottom platform here, tighten up the thumb screw and it now holds it where you want it exactly which allows me to go back to the other side of course and make some small adjustments to that and get it where it needs to be and again this is the kind of thing that requires two hands as you can see here in a second it's going to slip a little bit but then again it's a simple matter of just putting it back where you want it and then getting it tightened down well maybe two times you're going to notice the aquarium that I'm working on here is a little cloudy. That's because right underneath where I'm standing in a very, very awkward position is the sump. And I had to make some adjustments to that. And whenever you do that with a sump, it tends to kick a bit of uh, moments in the bottom of it into the impeller of the pump. And, of course, it just shoots into the water, which is another reason, of course, why I want to make this. Because this is such an awkward reach. Uh, I can't step closer because there is, well, a big three and a half foot long and two foot wide box <laughs> and I can't go anywhere near it because if I you know kick it or whatever it's going to crack and it's, <laughs> this is obviously not ready to take up the load so I have to be very careful uh, and again like I said it's very awkward again another reason why the third hand really comes in handy here so if you wonder what the backing is for I am going to drill this in place I'm going to uh, put it backing on like this and then I'm going to clamp this as tightly as possible, making sure everything's in place. And then I'm going to, right where my thumb was there, just for that second, there's a hole there. I'm going to drill through that and through both of the sides of the upright, the one inch square tube. So I want to make sure that uh, I don't want any of these aluminum chips uh, going into the water. So this is going to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I won't show you all of it. I'm going to uh, drill just this one side and get it in place. And then what I'm going to do is uh, do the other one off camera because, as you can see, it's not too bad here. It's reasonably um, easy to get to. But the other side, uh, you're going to see mostly the back of my head and uh, some arms. You're not really going to get to see uh, any of the work done anyway. So. Uh, I'll show you this one, and then just trust me in the fact that the other one is just really awkward. So without moving it, uh, having the bracket slide at all, I adjusted the clamp, moved it up to the top side, and drilled the second one. The nice thing with drilling these things in place, now you don't have to worry about measuring or anything, it just has to be made, you know, you know, make sure that it doesn't shift at all. And then after the holes drilled, just take the clamps off and just put the bolts on. I'm just going to put them on gently first, just by hand, uh, just to make sure that it stays where I want it to. And then what I'm going to do uh, off camera, I'm going to uh, drill through some washers to make sure they're the right size. And I'm going to put them on to, uh, well, the wood here, uh, this side of it, is, well, it's the end of, of three quarter inch plywood. So there's just a bunch of, well, layers there. Because you're not, you know, bolting to the face of it, if I bolted this down hard, uh, most likely what would happen is I would end up splitting uh, the wood. So I don't want to do that because I would obviously uh, ruin the seal I have on this. So that is the reason for that. You're going to see at the end. At the very end, you're going to see the washers in place. The washers I have are not stainless steel. So I'm a little concerned that they're going to rust. Uh, what I'm going to do, again, probably off camera, is just put a, when this is done, by the way, I'm going to put a layer of silicone on that. So there you go. Third hand has now done its job. This side is bolted in place, well, lightly bolted in place. Off camera, I did the other side, and now you're going to see at the end of this clip here, I've got the washers in as well. So I put a balance, uh, sorry, a level on here, and it came out pretty balanced. It's, uh about as good as I can expect. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit off, only marginally, uh, 
but it's fine. It's when I put the water in, you're going to see a bit better how level it is, and it's good enough for this. So there you go. The, you can see the washers there now, and it's all very thoroughly bolted. I could probably sit on this. I'm not going to because there's already three full tanks on this frame, and I don't certainly want to put any lateral uh, pressure on this. So now what I need to do here is this is the end piece for the uh, the shell for the sump, and what I did is I just took a marker and I ran it around the edge of the. Uh, well, the bottom end of that little notch I cut out, I want to make sure that this is above that because you know, obviously when I put it in place, I don't want it to interfere. I don't want to like, have an issue with uh, trying to fit on the fittings and stuff. So there, that's the reason for that. And the rest of this video is me welding up the shell for the sump. Now I'm going to leave all the internal aspects for this sump as add-ons. I don't want to have them as integral parts of this. And the reason for that is, even though I know the vast majority of you guys want to see this as an aquaponics setup as much as possible, uh, I know things change in time. I mean, I may want to alter this up and try something else. So I want all the aspects of filtration for this to be uh, removal and changeable so I can try different things. I know I'm going to make another one of these. Uh, but I want to make them both in this sort of format where they can be changed and uh, do something different every now and then. Now you notice the difference between this side and the other side is the hole, of course, that uh, is going to be where the water is going to come in. Now, another reason why I'm mentioning it is it makes this so much simpler, having that hole there, because I can, as you saw, I stuck my thumb in it and it allowed me to put pressure towards uh, the side of the, well, the part that's down right now. And it made it much simpler to weld. Of course, obviously I can't have a hole on both sides, but that's all right. It was just uh, something I wanted to mention. So there you go. I'm going to make this nice and watertight. And now we're going to weld on the two baffles. Now, the baffles just direct the flow of the water, preventing it from just, you know, going from... The, like it would If you didn't put a baffle in, it would just skim across the surface and go into the overflow, and then, of course... Uh, going uh, through the pump and back into the tank without really going through any of the filtration. So what I'm going to do here is put a baffle. This is going to be on the intake side and it goes right to the top and it will prevent the water from you know bypassing the filter media. It will go down through all that and you notice the gap at the bottom that's where it will flow through into the main central chamber and whatever I'm going to have done in that it will flow up through that and uh, then of course overflow into the second part. And I'm using a piece of three quarter inch ply for this because it is the simplest way of aligning this, making sure that uh, it's square to the sides and of course they're identical. That way, I'm lifting it up there by the way, just so that the uh, methylene chloride doesn't weep underneath and mar up the acrylic on the other side. And there you go, that's it. Now, I have to, obviously, the side that's on the bottom here uh, needs to be welded as well. These don't have to be uh, watertight. It's not essential because a small amount of water, uh, you know, oozing through is not an issue. But I want to make sure it's good and solid. So that's uh, the main reason for being careful at this point. Now, it's a simple matter of welding on uh, the final piece. Uh, it is a little bit different when you are welding up something that has this many different pieces. Even though they're all cut at the same time uh, with the exact same uh, saw stop, there are tiny little variations. And so when you have, as the case here, uh, five pieces of acrylic that you're trying to line up, uh, there are, like I said, there, might, there are small variations and uh, you have to be very careful. That's why I moved to the edge and just double checking that uh, I don't have any gaps. I want to make sure this is a, like a nice firm weld. And I'm holding this for quite some time, by the way. That's why the break in the, the recording there uh, is about three or four minutes. I want to make sure that the weld is full and solid before I moved it. And that's uh, all there is to it. Now I just need to uh, weld the two ends first because they are reference points. I am going to put, the, again, that piece of uh, three-quarter inch plywood in there to... Uh, make sure that the baffles are welded up again square on this side and that's it that's pretty much the whole thing this is going to sit on that bracket and in the next video i am going to make the internals for the intake side 
and set up what I need for the outtake side. And then of course I'm going to need, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit it all in one video. I need to rearrange the plumbing. The current plumbing has to be uh, tweaked quite a bit because uh, I have to make a, a joint for that to come into here. And then of course I have to have a pump returning water and it's going to be interesting trying to balance all that and still use the old sump for part of the filtration. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I haven't actually worked that all out yet. So I may end up having to do something different, but we'll see. So there you go. It's all done. Unfortunately, I left the marker on the piece of wood there. I can take that off later. It's not a big deal. Or I might just end up leaving it because it only looks nice and clear and clean once. After you have water flowing through it, it starts looking quite ugly. That's all right. It is a filter. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Leave comments. Let me know what you think of the progress on this and anything else for that matter. And I will see you in the next video. And bye for now.